Hey, what's up, Rangers? His daddy, Louie. Sorry, I'm looking for a specific paint color. I wanted to have all my paints out today, but, you know, of course, my colossal mess of paints. It's just they're everywhere. Hmm. What's a good khaki color? Let's see. Well, I guess we'll go with, uh, I guess we'll go with Car X down. So how are you guys today? Happy Monday. My name is Daddy Louie, in case you are not familiar with me. I'm a member of the Circle of Nerds. Uh, you can find all of my content on YouTube, youtube.com slash circle of nerds. Uh, I do mostly gaming reviews. Uh, I'm part of the Cosmic Disaster Show podcast. We have a Wednesday, no, Friday, Friday night, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a uh, Facebook live stream event that we do every Friday. Uh, but thank you always uh, to Renegade for having me on stream. I love being here with you guys on my Monday afternoons. Um, and as the sign says, we are painting uh, Rito Revolto today, uh, who is um, a very, very cool character um, in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers as well as in this game um the model is super cool i can't wait to show you um but before we get to that i really wanted this is look this is my this is my disaster of, and this is like two layers right this is my disaster of a paint setup here so anytime i need to find a specific color absolutely can't do that there we go I found the one I was looking for. Zandri Dust. I'm sure I'll need more later. When I need Wraith Bone, I'll get that out. Let's see what else we got here. You Shabbity Bone, we'll need that. Okay. Um, but I also, this week, got the full collection of Scale 75 paints. Look at this thing. Ooh, how pretty. Uh, and there's some missing because I already took them out. And I got this cool little, like, like cheat sheet. Look at that. So I can see all my colors. And I got new paint brushes. Just for you guys. No, that's a lie. It's for me, too. Um, so, yeah. So, Rito Revolto. Let's go to the table here. He is super duper cool. Uh, he's like a giant skeleton. He's got like a face in his chest. Uh, and he's got this huge blaster on his arm. And uh, a cool bone sword. So we're going to be painting him up. The cool thing about this character is that um, there's two different techniques of painting that I get to teach you guys um, while painting this model. So uh, today is definitely going to be a, um, a learning episode, a learning stream. So uh, if, you look at, um, if you look at reference pictures of him, he is uh, one side of him. He literally has like a line straight down his face. And one half of his whole body is just bone color. So uh, the side that's holding the sword, so this, um, his right side our left he is all bone so I'm gonna get to show you guys how to paint bone the other side of him including the blaster is all camo so I'm going to get to show you guys how to paint camouflage so this is a how to paint bone how to paint camouflage how to paint Rito Revolto live stream today um, so I've kind of go gone back and forth in my head how I wanted to do it if I wanted to do like one side first, then the other side, um, I'm not really too sure. We're gonna <laughs> kind of. Um, I don't. I think I want to paint the camo first, and then paint the bone. Uh, eh, I don't know. I keep, like I said, I keep going back and forth, and I guess I still haven't made a decision. Um, I think we're gonna do. I think we're gonna do the camo first. Uh, a, that's the hardest one, the hardest part to do, and, um, 
Yeah, so that's what we're going to go with. Um, so I washed the model uh, with soap and water and an old toothbrush, as I always do. Uh, and then I uh, did an undercoat of Wraith Bone. Uh, that's a great color to use for this model because he is going to be bone. Um, and then we're going to mix a few paints together to make the camo undertone. Um, and we'll probably start like on this part here over uh, on the back and then we'll do the front. The hardest part's gonna be his face because his face is kind of like like tilted um, to the side. So getting in here uh, in between like this uh, rifle, the blaster is gonna be a little challenging, but uh, I think we can handle it. So uh, to do this, we need to create a nice green brown gray uh, undertone so to do that we are going to use um, some Zandri dust um, some scale color field gray and uh, a roco Uroco. yeah so the these three colors together we're basically just trying to create like a nice green nice green undertone so I've got to shake them quite a bit uh, the um, sorry, my brain stopped working for a second. Um, the the scale color stuff is kind of uh, kind of difficult to work with. I'm getting a uh, a paint shaker, but it's not here and it's not in the mail yet. So you're just gonna have to see me shaking the old fashioned way. Uh, welcome to everybody that's watching, talking in the chat. Renegade, Jay Quellen. Shago. Hope you guys are having a great uh, Monday. Uh, it was a little chaotic in the house earlier, but so far, knock on wood, it's calmed down. So that's good. Um, Alright, so we're going to use... That's probably not shaking up enough. Uh, so the key to camo, doing any camo, is to be random. You want to make sure that your splotches uh, don't have any distinguishable patterns to them. Uh, because if you look at actual camouflage, um, it's pretty uh, it's pretty random. The patterns are, are pretty random. Uh, so we got some of that Oroco. Now we're going to... It's Daddy Louie from the Circle of Nerds. That's me. Uh, now we're going to, let's see, open this color. This is field gray. It's kind of like a greenish gray. Kind of what we're going for. It's a really nice looking color. And then our Xandri Dust. I don't know if you can see up here in the top of the... And here's one of our new brushes, our nice Raphael brush. Uh, which, the Raphael brushes are, are taking a little time to get used to, but they're not bad. Kind of messed around with them a little bit this weekend. That's exactly what we were going for there. It's a really um, nice, like, olive green. Uh, what you would imagine uh, army fatigues, old army fatigues to look like. Uh, and let's... Not Donatello. What's not Donatello? What are you talking about? Um, uh, so right now I'm just going for base coat of this color. <laughs> I 
I have no idea what you're talking about. I mean, I know you're talking about um, Ninja Turtles. You're saying I'm not Donatello? This actually might be too green. Oh. Ah. Uh. <laughs> no, no, no. That was a good joke. See, I'm laughing. I just... I... So, you got to understand. What I say is delayed to you guys. So, it's like... Probably like a 30-second delay. So, what I'm saying right now, you're not hearing for 30 seconds after I say it. So... The jokes have to be, like, before I even speak them. <laughs> you have to know what I'm going to say before I say it. It's a funny joke, I promise. I was actually nervous because, um, like, not to keep self-promoting, but... One of the episodes that we did of our show recently, we talked about The Last Ronin, which is a, um, a comic book that's coming out, um, the, the Ninja Turtle comic book, where they talk about how three of the four um, Turtle Brothers have died and one is left, but you don't know which one that it is right away because whoever it is is like donning all of the weapons of all the brothers. Um, and in the podcast or the episode that I was on, I think it was a Nerds on Ice episode, I said um, that I thought the last Ronin was going to be Donatello. So when you said in the chat, not Donatello, I thought maybe you knew like something that I didn't know. <laughs> and th there were like spoilers going. You were like, not Donatello. But th you didn't say anything else. So I was like, oh, gosh. Spoiler alert. It's not Donatello like I thought it was. This is a little greener than I wanted it to be. Um, Uh, so the key here on this base color is just to uh, make sure that you don't get any of the uh, paint on the side that's not camo uh, because we want to make sure that um, we leave that, that wraith bone color. So I'm going to show you guys a really quick and easy trick for doing bone. Yeah, this is a little more green than I wanted it to be. We'll see if that is a problem or not. I'm hoping it won't be. I'm already more than halfway done, so I'm not going to change it just yet. Probably going to need more paint on uh, the palette there. Anybody do anything fun and exciting this weekend? I, um, I finally got to get some gaming in, which was pretty good. Some board gaming. Unfortunately, I didn't get to play Power Rangers because everybody was wanting to play some of the newer games that I had gotten. But I'll take it. I'll take some board gaming over no board gaming.
So I got a little bit of this color on his face where I didn't want it, but that's all right. I can go back over it. Uh, what do you stream when you stream? Like, like magic, like arena, like on the computer, or are you actually playing like with the cards and stuff? <laughs> Don't you have to buy the cards on the computer too? Isn't it like the same price for like virtual cards as it is? Playing Pathfinder Kingmaker. Is that a uh, computer game too? So painting Rito Revolto is um, I posted a poll on the um, on the Power Rangers Facebook group. I will do that again this evening. Um, I did that two weeks ago. The number one choice uh, or the one, number one most requested um, uh, the number one most requested model to be painted was Ninjor. Who we painted last week i'll show him off again a little later uh, now that everything's dried he looks great um and then number two was rito revolto so uh, i think number three was pudgy pig unfortunately my pudgy pig has already been painted uh, i painted him he was one of the first models i painted uh, so i won't be able to do that on stream um so i'm gonna go ahead and make a new poll and uh and see what kind of responses we get. We had quite a few responses, so if you are not a member of that group, please go and join it. Um, just go on Facebook and uh, search for Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid. There's like almost 6,000 people in the, uh, in the group, so uh, go and join that and hang out with us over there. Um, uh, so you can participate in those polls. Uh, so we can get, uh, so we can paint the things that you want to see me paint. You're wearing coins in game to buy cards. Oh, okay. Um, I did, uh, welcome Rom. I did, uh, freehand the line. Yes. Uh, I messed up slightly on the face, but we're going to go back and fix that. My ninja was awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, so, most of the photos that I found online of this guy, um, he had... Um, his blaster is not showing. It's just his sword. And uh, the ones that I could find, the blaster is uh, is completely camo too. I think we're going to change it up a little bit. We might make the hoses a different color just to break it up. Because um, honestly, I thought the blaster would look cool not camo. But I'm going to do it as uh, 
close to what I found as possible. We're going to, uh, we need some more of this color, so we're gonna make some more. Uh, so this is Zandri Dust, Field Gray, and Oroku, Oroko. This is more than we need, but it's kind of like a one-to-one -one from what I did last time. Oh yeah, it's really nice. Really nice color. A little darker than I thought it would be, so we'll see. We'll see how that is. Renegade took liberties with Rito. Why don't you guys, for those of you that are um, so much more knowledgeable on Power Ranger lore than I do, than I am, why don't you guys um, tell me about Rito? Like where, I know he's from um, Mighty Morphin. Um, was he just in one episode? I've saw, I've seen some sick fan art. Like when I was looking him up, people have done some really great fan art of him. Um, and it's mostly fan art because I don't think that he was in uh, much of the show, which is a shame because he's a really really cool uh, looking villain. He's Rita's brother. Uh, not sure if they have the same mom. He's kind of an idiot. Teamed up with Goldar a lot. He's the one that gave Rita and Zed. Oh. Oh, so he was on the show a lot then. And when I say a lot, I mean more than, you know, your average villain. I love that you guys come in with your with your uh, with your show knowledge. It's I think that's what I look forward to the most. The uh, the uh, 
each week. It's just learning so much about these characters that I don't know as much about as you guys do. You always, uh, you always fill me in. Well, I give credit to the design team that created him because he is a very cool looking character and Renegade has done a fabulous job of making a very cool model, uh, bringing a very cool model into the game. Alright, so that's a pretty solid uh, base color that we have there. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I do want to fix the few places that the line got away from me. <laughs> no, please nerd out. That's, that's, that is what we are here for. I love... Um, regardless of the fandom, um, cause I am, I am a fan of many fandoms, um, regardless of the fandom, I love when people nerd out about the things that they're passionate about, you know, even if it's something, you know, a nerdum that I don't care about, like, I like learning about other people's, um, other person, other people's, you know, passions and stuff. So don't don't be afraid, especially around me, to to nerd out on your passion. All right, that looks pretty darn good. I like it a lot. Okay. Um, I think we're going to paint the hoses of the blaster next. Uh, I think I'm going to use German gray for that. Uh, I want them to look more black, and they'll definitely darken down once I um, once I put some some wash on it later. So I saw, um, this is kind of a interesting question for the group. And I'm asking you guys, because most of you guys are with me, you know, most weeks. Um, I saw some streamers painting uh, recently over the weekend. I was, I was watching some streamers. And rather than having the camera in the top corner um, uh, on the person who was painting, they had it on the palette and on the supplies. And they weren't showing their face at all. So all you could see was the, um, the model that was being painted and the palette, um, you know, the supplies and stuff. Um, I'm just curious if that's something that people would enjoy more. Um, I certainly do not have to show my face. If you guys would rather see the, um, you know, the palette 
uh, and the colors and stuff like that all the time. And not me. That's... I never honestly even thought about that, but, it, you know, some people don't, uh, don't want to look at the painter, especially since the painter's nine times out of ten not looking at them, they're looking at the, uh, at the model that they're painting. Something to think about, curious to know what you guys think. Making connections in the chat. I love it. Yeah, last week on our show, uh, it was about Power Rangers. And um, we were short um, a guest. So I know Jay Quellen was trying at the last minute to try and find some knowledgeable super fans. Um, on Power Rangers. Because I'm a guest a lot. I don't... Uh, we try and pick people, not us, to be on the show. Spread the love. Uh, the reason that I am, um, <laughs> some people hate the daddy hat. I personally love the daddy hat. There's actually a, uh, I got this hat at, um, fan, uh, Boston Fan Expo last, um, summer. Um, the guy who makes these hats, uh, was there. He had a booth and I passed him. And I saw a hat just like this one, but it was blue and it was like, had like the cosmos on it. So rather than just being like black with stars, it was blue with like some, uh, some cosmos on it. And, uh, and my wife was with me and we passed by it. I said, I'm gonna buy the hat. And she said, um, that's the most ridiculous looking hat I've ever seen in my life. And I said, yep, and I'm going to buy it on our way back. And uh, I forgot about it. And then the next day, we worked the whole weekend. So we were, we were at the convention the whole weekend working. And um, the next day, or the last day, I remembered. So I went by his table, and he didn't have any. And I was like, oh, man, like, you don't have any with, with Daddy on it. And he was like, no, I, I'm, I sold out. I was like, well, that stinks. He was like, you can check our website. Um, you know, I'll put more up there later. So I took like a business card and, um, he, uh, um, the next day as we were leaving last day of the convention, um, I went by his table again and he, this one was sitting on the table and he was like, yeah, I found it like a few minutes after you left. I tried looking for you and I couldn't find you. And I was like, well, I'm, you know, I'm going to buy it. And so I bought it and, um recently i went on his website and he's got like seven of them one is like a leopard print so it's like like daddy is like in gold and like the whole thing is like leopard print and then he's got the blue one with the cosmos and he's got another one that's like red and um i kind of i kind of just want them all they're not cheap though so You know how, like, some streamers have, like, a, uh, like, a wish list, and, like, you can go on the wish list and, like, buy your favorite streamer, like, something off their wish list as a, 
you know, tip to the streamer, I'm going to do that. I'm going to make, like, a streamer. I don't even need one for every day of the week. I just like to switch it up, like, not wear, you know, like, have one for different shirts that I have on or just have um, just different stuff to just to break it up so it's not the same hat every because I wear this hat on the Cosmic Disaster Show. I wear it when I'm on Nerds on Ice. I wear it when I'm streaming with you guys. I wear it when I'm making my YouTube videos. Like, it's always this hat. And I just think it would be really, really cool to um, have some different ones. Especially the leopard print one. You guys should see it. It's like the most ridiculous thing. We don't like you that much. Well, that's fine. That's totally fine. Um, so right now I'm just... There's a few... I noticed a few spots that I missed with the green. Uh, so I'm just going back over that. I don't want to put more paint on my palette and waste it. What was the website? Hmm. In a second, I'll let you know, because it's on. It's actually on the brim of my hat. You just can't see it. But he's got some really cool hats. Um, he's got all different kinds of, like, obviously, Daddy's not the only one that he's got. Um, but essentially all the hats are the same. It's just, like, different letters that are, like, bolted on. These are, like, screwed on with, like, these cool, like, shiny bolt things. And then these things are, like, I don't know, 2D. I actually have to, like, re-screw these down because they're a little loose. I don't want to lose any. Um, and he's got different words and different patterns. He's a really cool guy. Um... And, like, when I bought the hat, I was, like awesome and I wore, I put it on my head and my wife was with me and she was like I'm not going to walk around with you if you're wearing that and I was like alright see you later because it is a very ridiculous hat I'm very well aware um okay all good so we've got our line. Uh, we have our base coat of the um, of that green underneath. Uh, it's like an olive green. Again, something you'd see like in uh, fatigues, um, you know, army fatigues. And then we just uh, we painted the uh, the coils there on the blaster because I think it looks cool. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a wash on the bone stuff so it can be drying while we start working on the camo. So let's see. The website is um, Cosplay Moo Moo. M-O-O-M-O-O. -O You'd probably have to Google it because that's probably not like... Yeah, I need to retighten all these. You guys didn't tell me. Oh, and I'm also covering up my bald head. That's also another thing that it does. Keeps you keeps me from glaring you guys. Alright, let's see. Um so Oh I forgot. I also bought these guys. These things. I don't really need them for Power Ranger models, but for other models, small ones. Check it out. <laughs> uh yeah it's darker than uh than i thought it was going to be um so i don't i don't know if i like it as much but it'll be fine um so now i'm looking for my wash we're gonna use agrax earthshade so this is a great um this is a great tip for you guys, um, if you're painting bone, do a base coat of Wraith Bone, whether it's um, painted on or spray, 
and then once it's dry, do straight Agrax Earthshade onto the um, onto the model. And when it dries, it looks just like a bone. You literally you don't have to do anything else. Uh, we're going to, of course, because that's what I do. But let's see. Uh, Shego says, design wise, Rito seems like kind of character. Who would have a ton of repaints? Just paint his camo a different color and call it. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. You could have like um. Yeah, there's so many different types of camo. Well, you could have like uh, like snow camo. You could have like like you said desert desert camo. There's lots of different camo colors you could do. You could do like the navy blue, like the, the the way the navy guys have it now on their uniforms. You could also have like stealth stealth uh, Rito, where he like wears like mostly black. Uh, so, away from the line, I'm being pretty, uh, careless with how I slopped this on there. When I get a little closer to the line, I'm gonna have to be, like I just did there, I'm gonna have to be a little careful. I don't want this to go, um, into our base coat for the camo, because actually, when we put a wash over the camo, we're going to use, um, different wash than this. We're not gonna use the same color. Of course, if we get a little on there, it's okay. We're allowed to make uh, goof ups. We are not professionals. Well, you might be a professional. I'm not a professional. I want to make sure that I get lots of, um, I want to make sure that I get lots of, um, this Agrax Earthshade in to some of those deeper recesses, especially, like, on the skulls of the knees, because I want those to be, like, real dark, um, as it would, like that, as it would on bone. Sorry, I'll look at the chat in just a second. I want to make sure that I uh, get this wash on before anything dries. Um, um, yep, so the base is Wraithbone, and then the shade is um, Agrax Earthshade. Well, I just got freaking Agrax Earthshade all over my hands. I have no idea how I did that. Maybe I touched it. I didn't mean to touch it. Mm. 
the wash is on the base, that's why. All right, um, I think, I think I got wash everywhere that I wanted wash. Now I'm gonna go through before it dries and just absorb some of it where it's pooling. And then I want to make sure, like I said, that it's real in there on like the eyes of the skulls. He's got little skulls around his belt. Uh, he's got skulls on his knees. He's got these little nostrils here. He's got these eyes underneath his bone. And then he's got these eyes over here. He's got skulls on his shoulder. He's got skulls everywhere. Just being careful, making sure I... Some of the flat spots here and up here. Sorry, I'm not ignoring the chat, I promise. I just want to do all this before it dries. Because um, once it dries, you're kind of up a creek, if you know what I mean. that dry start working on the other side um, you'll see that will dry really really nicely yeah so this method of wraith bone with agrax over top of it in my opinion is better is the best um, the best bone technique um, out right now. Um, you know, if you wanted to do a more complex way of doing it, you could um, you could do like a Zandri dust base, um, and then Agrax Earthshade, uh, you Shabbity Bone Dry Brush, Screaming Skull Dry Brush. Um, my uh, Agrax is pushing over to the camo side. Get, get, stay on your side. Stay on your side, Agrax. Uh, this is just easier and faster, uh, and the result is good. Um, Games Workshop also makes um, a Skeleton Horde uh, contrast paint. I just don't think it does as nice of a job as 
this method here that we just did. All right, so now we're going to start on the camouflage. We've got a nice olive green base. Um, we did we do have some uh, pooling of the agrax that's coming over. Um, I could wait for that to dry, but and then paint over it, but. Uh, I'm just going to absorb it. Let's see. I don't even think I've got. See, I'm I'm kind of out of paint over here on my palette of that uh, olive, and uh, I don't want to make more. All right. Um, so the next thing that we want to do is start creating our camouflage blobs um i'm gonna use a dark green first and then so we're gonna do dark green brown like dark brown um and then black and then some very small other colors um maybe maybe like a tan uh so this is uh Ardenus green from scale color this is one of the new scale color greens this is i went through all my greens earlier and this one is the darkest green i have so that's why we're doing it um i'm going to start on the back and then do the legs and work my way up trying to let that uh that spot dry around the collarbone to see if maybe I can clean it up a little bit before camouflage blobs is is a technical term yeah don't let anybody tell you differently I don't even know if you guys can see that or not. Let's see. I'm going to zoom this camera in a little bit. Let's bring it down closer to the table. And like I said earlier, when you're doing this, you do not want this to be in any um, pattern. And it's going to look ridiculous at first because you're just using one color. But once we get all the other colors on, it's going to look great. This is going to be a kind of like a mix of like a uh, um, uh, like a regular old school. I don't even know what they're called. I know what we called them when I was when I used to wear them while I was on active duty. Well, I'm on active duty now, but. Um, It's like uh it's not desert camo and it's not jungle camo it's like uh just the battle dress uniform the regular what camouflage blobs is that what we're that's what we're naming our band camouflage blobs
So the idea here is once we get like the other colors on, um, you're not going to see much of the, the olive green undertone. So that's kind of what our uh, objective is. I like that name, Camouflage Blobs, for a band. Hope this turns out well, y'all. I haven't I haven't done camo in forever. I know it will. It's good. You're almost just like random splotches. Camouflage blobs. Say that 10 times fast. Camouflage blobs, camouflage blobs. Woodlands, thank you. Woodlands camo, that's what I was thinking of. I don't know why I could not, for the life of me, figure out what it was called. I knew it wasn't juggle camo. You get a cookie for remembering what it was called. Do you notice how when I first started doing this, um... I was being very like, like these lines up here, I was like, oh, they need to have patterns. And then as I got closer down here at the end, I was like, eh, I'm just gonna draw. That is the reason that I decided to do that is because um, we'd be here literally all day if I drew everything in a specific pattern. <laughs> yeah, Jay Quellen, what kind of music will um, we play as the camouflage blobs? Can it be the type of music we're listening to? I feel like that's... I feel like this is very camouflage... Blobs. You should paint a model using only nail polish. That would be different.
just get green where I didn't want it? No, I didn't. Okay. Uh, let's see. That paint or that uh, wash right there is still not dry. Uh, what game got you into painting minis? That's a great question. Um, so when I was uh, in high school, uh, there was a Games Workshop store in one of our malls. And um, we had... I want to say it was senior skip day, and uh, me and some friends went to that mall, and we decided to, because I convinced them to, um, split a, a a GW starter set, and um, you know we read it for like five seconds and realized how complicated it was, and we didn't really end up doing anything with it. Somehow I ended up with it, probably because. I was the one that convinced us to buy it, and uh, I painted one of the Space Marines like a um, a Blood Angel, which is their red-ish um, uh, one of the Space Marine chapters. Fast forward, um, I only ever, I only painted one, and it came out horrible. I actually have it still. Um, and fast forward many, many, many years, and, um, I started playing tabletop games with X-Wing from Fantasy Flight, and, uh, if you don't know, X-Wing Fantasy Flight, uh, models are... Um, these ones on the back turned out terrible, by the way. I'm, I have to fix them. Um, all of the models in X-Wing are pre-painted, so you don't have to do any painting. Uh, so I played that game for, um, a few years, and, um, uh, Frostgrave came out, which is a game in which... You can use any models that you want to play the game. And I have a thing for dwarves. And a friend of mine at the store where I played X-Wing gave me a copy of the rule book for free. And he said, all you need to pe play is, you know, some miniatures. And you can play with any miniatures you want. And so I went to... Uh, I, I was already in a game store, and they had Reaper models, little Bones models that were like a dollar or two a piece, and they had a bunch of dwarves. So I got like one of every dwarf, and I was like, I guess I'm going to use these, and they had a Reaper um, get started painting kit. And I was like, well, let me, I mean, I guess I'll try painting these things because I like dwarves, and I, I want them to look cool. And... Um, and so I bought it, and the rest is history. I painted them up. They're actually in that display cabinet behind me, the dwarves that I painted. They were the very first thing I ever painted other than the that one space marine when I was a teenager. And uh, I've been painting miniatures ever since. I got into um, a few other miniature games here and there, and yeah, that was it. Um, I lost my train of thought. What was I doing? Okay, so we did the green. Now we're going to do the dark brown. Uh, for the dark brown, we're going to use, uh, German camo black brown from Vallejo. Uh, because this is a really nice dark brown. Um, yeah, I have seen some people paint, uh, X-Wing miniatures. Believe it or not, I've never painted an X-Wing miniature. Which seems crazy because 
that was like the game I was playing the most when I got into painting. But I personally just like the way that they look. <laughs> you know, the those those um, X-wing models. I don't feel like they need to be painted, which is not to say you shouldn't or you can't, because like I said, I've seen uh, some really great uh, painted miniatures, but uh, just not my thing, I guess. So now the strategy here is to put uh, some of these, these black spots uh, on and around, not black spots, sorry, these brown splotches on and around the, um, the green blobs that we already did. Uh, this is not covering those blobs up. This is um, mostly accenting them and creating new blobs. Uh, this is, there's no real trick to this. Uh, you just don't want it to look like you did it in like the places that you put it were intentional. So I'm trying to be random while also fixing these random blobs I did earlier because I'm not too happy with some of these blobs. So you kind of do like a line and then like a line from a line and then like a dot and then a line, line from the line and then a dot. That's kind of like the strategy-ish. And again, once it's all done, it'll all uh, come together. Promise. What was everybody else's first? Like, what did you have? Is this the first game that you've ever painted um, or been interested in painting for those of you that might not have started painting Power Rangers yet. I know um, when I first heard about this Power Ranger game and backed it on Kickstarter and all that good stuff, um, I noticed in the comments that there were a lot of people who had never painted before. Like they, you know, it is a board game. And so when you do board games with miniatures, you tend to have um, a lot of people in the community not paint their their models because um, you know they're not miniature painters they're they're board gamers <laughs> or they'll pay a commissioner you know like they'll commission somebody to paint for them or sometimes it gets people into painting you know they're like oh I've never painted before and now they're they're passionate about painting and they want to paint other stuff. I've been a part of a few Kickstarters that that's done that, or a few board games with miniatures. First mini you painted was a small knight. <laughs> Shag, can we can you write the lyrics to camouflage for me? So that way we can you can be our songwriter. And me and Jay Quellen, we're gonna start a band called Camouflage Blobs. And our first single is going to be called Camo. Camouflage. <laughs> so I don't know if you can see but the back of that leg is starting to look really, really good. I really want to paint Gunpla too, 
but I, so, um, a little secret about me, I guess, when it comes to this hobby of painting, I love painting models. It's a huge passion of mine. I despise putting models together. So this game is great because I don't have to put any models together, right? But there's some games where that's not the case. <laughs> you have to put models together. Um, so like Gunplas, like I really want to get into painting Gunplas and collecting Gunplas because I think they're awesome. Um, I don't want to build them. I almost want to form like a partnership with somebody who does like building them. I tried to get my son into it because I think that he would like model building and stuff. And he couldn't get into it either because I wanted him to like build them and then I would paint them and then we would have like this really cool like collection. It didn't work. It didn't work, guys. He didn't like it either. Um, so <laughs> you'll build them. Yeah, so the key to this, uh, the camo on this guy is going to be the colors, not the patterns. Because again, you want to, like right now I'm just kind of like brushing over. It's making like these splotches on the chest. And it's the coloration of the different colors that I'm using. And when it all comes together, it's just like, oh, that's, that's definitely camouflage. Um... And it's not even that the gunpla kits are complicated. Because, um, like, I understand the rules and stuff. I just don't have the patience to clip everything, file it. Like, if you could just clip and snap, that'd be different. But, like, for me, I'm like, I've got to... Like, I know there's flash on all of this. So, like, I feel the need to clip it and file it and, you know, make each piece look really nice before I like put it together that's my problem with gunpla i give people that can do it a lot of credit because campfire song really camouflage is a campfire song hmm I'll have to look that up later that camouflage song sounds cool the wash on the other side is finally starting to dry there's a couple spots that it didn't dry that I wanted it to so in a second we're gonna go back over that and fix it.
Okay. Uh... Alright. So... There's a few, there's a few too much um, brown in some spots, so I'm gonna do that uh, green again. I'm basically, just thinning out some of that brown a little bit because I don't want it to be brown. Camo isn't brown; uh, it has brown in it but it's not primarily brown. It's actually primarily green. Woodland camo, anyway. Green and tan. Um, brown and black are more accent colors than anything else. Uh, and that's a good thing about this strategy, is if you get some in places you don't want it, uh, you can just uh, reapply one of the other colors. Uh, so now, while that's doing its thing, um, I'm going to go back to my wash. Um, and I'm going to put it in a couple spots that um, it didn't darken the way I wanted it to. Primarily in the skulls. Because again, those skulls you want... You want to put um, you want to put the wash in there so that it uh, makes it look like eye, makes the eyes like pop, you know. And I'm gonna put a little bit in his right eye. gonna be stubborn never noticed Rito has a skull on it. yeah yep he has skulls on his knees his shoulders his back his chest and his face obviously thing with wash is like if you put it somewhere and you want it to dry and then you like move the model around to paint something else uh, sometimes it doesn't like dry like it'll move you know what I mean since it is so liquidy so it's like unless I lay the model down and I don't move it around there's no guarantee it's gonna stay where I want it so we're just going to have to do it and hope for the best. Okay. Um, so now we got to go on to our light birch color. Now for the birch color, 
we're literally just going to it's it's an accent color only um, so we're gonna get our smallest brush and we're just putting tiny dots and tiny lines um, basically randomly all over and when I say dots I don't like mean literal dots like you know our favorite thing blobs Some small blobs, some big blobs, but blobs nonetheless. These might, and this color might seem really light at first. You're like, wow, that's too light. Um, but when we put the wash on it, it'll darken it down. And I put uh, literal dots up here. I want to make those more blobs. I'm noticing that this color is very, this uh, blob color I'm using is very color, uh, very uh, similar to Wraithbone. So if you don't have these same paints, you could probably use Wraithbone for this step as well. Did everybody have a good weekend? Did I ask that already? I think I did. Sorry. What did everybody do this weekend? I don't think anybody said. Any painting? Any gaming? Any family trips? Anybody see any movies? Two good movies came out this weekend. Bill and Ted and uh, The New Mutants. Anybody get to go see those? All of our theaters are still closed, so I'm, uh, I cannot see anything yet. Which stinks. I've heard good things, though, about both movies. Anybody watch uh, basketball? Celtics took game one yesterday. Go Celtics. Did the Psycho Rangers come out in September? Um, so that's it. We don't want to put too many of those blobs on there. Uh, I may have actually put too many on there, but we'll see how it looks in a second. 
Um, so this little trick, this next trick, uh, I learned from another YouTuber, and I feel really bad because I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Uh, but we're going to use um, two types of washes, and we're going to mix them together for the camo. Uh, and this is Strong Tone and... Wait, is it Strong Tone? Let's see. Strong Tone and Soft Tone, not Dark Tone. I forgot. Darn. That's okay. Uh, so yeah, this is um, a one-to-one -one mix of Strong Tone and Light Tone. And this goes just over the camo. I can't believe... I, I don't know why I was thinking it was later than September for um, for that stuff. I'm doing 15 drops of strong tone, 15 drops of light tone, and I'm going to mix them together. Okay. Sorry, I have to count every single drop. So we'll get our wash brush here. Mix that up. Well, I'm very excited for the Psycho Rangers. That's going to be quite awesome. Um, definitely need to get those up here so we can paint them on stream, of course. This is going all over, uh, the entire thing, by the way. If you've seen this technique before, like I said a second ago, it is definitely not my technique. I stole it. Um, I just can't remember the dude's name. Uh, it was a long, long time ago that I saw his video, so it's probably a really old video. But So to that person, if you're watching this, know that um, uh, I tried to give you credit. I just couldn't think of your name. <laughs> is it is that what it is? Cujo painting. Um, If that's what it is, then uh, big shout out to you, buddy. Because uh, it works. This technique works. talking too much because this has to go on 
So this type of wash is a little different than GW's. It's a little thicker and uh, it dries a lot faster. So I'm trying to make sure I get it all on there before it dries. I also probably shouldn't have used this brush um, for this type of wash, but that's all right. So this type of wash is like, um, it's like a brown wash. Um, but it's kind of got a greenish tint to it. That's why it works so well with the camo. Um, if you were to use Agrax Earthshade, it would certainly darken stuff up, but that's basically all it would do. It's not going to tint it the same way that, uh, this will. And that's what we're trying to do is get like a nice, uh, earthy tint to it. Uh, cause it is camo after all. And it's going to add some really nice definition to places that uh, otherwise wouldn't have um, definition. I probably used way too much of the wash, so all that's going to be wasted, so that's awesome. Get it everywhere. Nope. Uh, so you can see as this dries and as I'm putting it places that all of those colors are dulling down, especially that birch, um, that lighter color that I use, um, which is good. All right, uh, so that's all of that. Uh, so we'll set this aside for now. And that aside. And let's take a look at what we got so far. Um, so for the bone, going back over to the bone, um, you have a few options. You could leave it as is, um, cause it does look very, very good. Um, you could highlight it a little bit and, uh, I'm going to show you what to do for that. Um, you want to start with your shabbity bone. Uh, you could start with, eh, maybe we actually should do that. Let's see. Let's start with Xandri dust and see what that looks like. Uh, no, that's too dark. 
so we definitely want to use Yushavity Bone. This guy definitely deserves a base, like we did on, um, like we did on Ninjor last week. Um, we probably won't have time to do it on stream, but. Um, so this step here, we're just basically taking highlighted areas that we want to define a little better, and just doing some light highlights. Nothing, nothing crazy. All these little teeth on the on the skull and the knee here. Just certain things that you want to pop out. You could do like all these bones here. I say all these bones here, like the dude's made of all bones. Of course, I mean the bones. I should be specific with which bones I'm referring to. Um, is there a reason to mix both rather than use a medium tone? Uh, so, uh, Army Painter, uh, they have three different tones. They have soft tone, um, they have strong tone, and then they have, uh, dark tone. Um, so, s uh, strong tone is their medium tone. So you're bringing down the medium a little bit with the, uh, with the soft. If that makes sense. Yeah, I don't know. I honestly don't know why they don't change the names to strong, medium, and soft or something like that. Because dark, strong, and soft doesn't make sense. Like, strong makes sense, and soft means makes sense. But dark being above strong, to me, just doesn't make sense. I get them confused all the time, too. Um... Try and find my... I thought I had some screaming skull, and I don't have any. Hmm. Curious.
All right, well, I guess we're gonna use Wraithbone because I don't know what happened to that. Actually, let's mix some Wraithbone with the, there we go. So I don't have any Screaming Skull, I thought I did. So I'm gonna take some of the Wraithbone and mix it with some of the Shabbity Bone to make like an even brighter. making some some of the more extreme highlights I really want to paint the inside of the cannon, like right here, like these little bits. There's still a lot of wash in there. And I'm running out of time. <laughs> Let's see what we can do with that. Alright, what color do you think... What color... We'll take a vote real quick in the chat. What color do you think that the blaster shoots? So the lasers that come out of the blaster, what color do you think it should be? I'll let you guys decide. Okay, no rainbow. <laughs> thanks, thanks for your suggestion, Jay Quellen. Okay, so we got yellow, orange, red, orange. I just threw my glitter away. So we're going to go with all of those suggestions that aren't glitter and rainbow.
<laughs> glitter orange and red. I literally just threw my orange or my glitter away. I had some glitter um, actually that I used way back when I first started painting. Um, when I first started painting dwarfs for Frostgrave. One of the things in Frostgrave is that you're trying to get, uh, get treasure. And so I made some treasure tokens. And I got some glitter um, to make gold, like the gold pieces on the treasure chests um, look like they were shining. It actually works really, really well. So if you're ever trying to do like gold pieces, um, you can use actual glitter. Um, but it was old. It was like five years old, so... Sorry, I'm being like super duper careful. Holy moly. I'm gonna take a few liberties too. Sorry, I know I'm not talking much. I haven't talked much this uh, stream, not as much as I normally try and do. He's um, he's a fairly big model, and um, I wanted to do him justice, so I've been focusing quite a bit. And I wanted to teach you guys something new. Hopefully I did.
Uh, so the trick here is to start with the, the darkest color uh, that you have uh, first, and then basically making your circle smaller. So you fill the whole thing with um, a dark red. I used Mephiston red, and then I went to Evil Sun Scarlet, Wild Rider red, uh, again, making each circle smaller um, because when you have something that's hot, uh, the center of it is the hottest. And the hotter it is, uh, the the brighter the color is. Um, now I'm using, I'm on uh, Fire Dragon Bright. Is that what it is? Yeah, Fire Dragon Bright, which is like an orange. Uh, then I'm going to do a little bit of yellow. And then finally, you need a white. Man, I managed to fill my whole palette today. It's the first time that's happened in a while. And this, you just want it to be like microscopic. That was a little more than microscopic, but that's all right. And that's it. So fragile, like it was built to break off the hand. So, looks like it's firing. And uh, let me get my And uh, that is Rito Revolto. He is not dry. You can still see there's lots of uh, shade and stuff uh, still in there that needs to dry. Um, but um, next stream, I'll, I'll show you the uh, what he looks like not still sopping <laughs> wet from the, from the wash. Uh, I think he turned out pretty good. Um, I really like that effect with the red and orange, so thanks to the stream for making recommendations. Maybe next time I can make rainbow glitter blaster beams or whatever. Um, yeah, there's, I mean, there's obviously way more that you can do if you wanted to. You could highlight all the bone. Um, I don't think it's necessary. I think the bone actually looks really, really good. Um, the camo is darker than um it looks 
uh, or I mean, I, it's brighter than it looks on the on the camera. Um, so I definitely think that it looks really, really good. And um, so I think we're at time. Yep, we're at time now. So I want to thank everybody who uh, tuned in this week. Uh, for those of you who uh, tune in every week, I appreciate you very, very much. Um, I've started to have uh, a little collection of fans that, that come uh, and watch me every single week, so I really appreciate you guys. Uh, if you're new to the stream, join me every Monday from uh, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, 1 to 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific Time right here on Play Renegades Twitch. I am uh, Daddy Louie. If you don't know me, uh, you can find me on YouTube, youtube.com slash circle of nerds. Go and subscribe. We have uh, lots of different uh, types of videos, all uh, related to nerdy stuff, including board games, and I have some painting tutorials and stuff over there. Um, and But yeah, uh, join our Facebook groups. Uh, we have a, a painting, a Renegade Painting Facebook group. Uh, go and check that out and join that Facebook group. Join the um, the Power Rangers uh, Facebook group as well um, because uh, you can see lots of cool stuff like this. I'm going to go make a, a poll for that tonight uh, so that we can decide what it is that we're going to stream next week. Uh, as always, don't forget, play your games, and I'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>